One of the questions I get asked a lot is what can I use instead of an egg white? Whether it's because you're vegan or you are allergic or you just think that raw eggs are gross. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to use some kind of an alternative to an egg white. Now in truth, I don't mind raw egg whites as you may have guessed since I've probably ingested like 500 over the course of this show. So I just never really bothered to look into it except from what I've heard in comments. Until today. Today, we're going on a journey of discovery together to find the best egg white alternative. Okay, so first things first. Why do some drinks even get an egg white, okay? Well, uh, because when they are shaken, they impart the drink with a velvety, smooth, silky texture and a lovely, frothy head that is frankly, in a drink that wants it, pretty, pretty tough to beat, honestly. Now the next question then, becomes, how do egg whites do this feat of magic? So, the white of an egg is almost entirely uh, is almost entirely protein, albumin or maybe ovalbumin. I, I never took organic chemistry or anything, so I gotta go by what I read, and sometimes those things conflict with each other. And keep in mind, I'm a pretend internet bartender, I am not a scientist. So these are big, long, complicated proteins, and when they're on their own, like that, undisturbed, they are folded and packed up super duper tight, molecularly speaking. If we start to jostle them around, the proteins loosen and unfold, and spaces open up inside of them, spaces that you might call air bubbles, in fact, because that's basically what egg whites do. They form a stable foam, or meringue, uh, by encapsulating and holding onto air bubbles and wrapping them up in protein. Anyway, egg white proteins. They're so long, that's why you can beat an egg white to just an incredible increase in volume. You can take one egg white and just beat it, beat it, beat it, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it just keeps unfolding. And they'll keep unfolding until you just go too far and your meringue collapses and you get left out of French cooking school. And then I think at that point, pretty much your only option career move wise is super villain. So what I was thinking I would do is we would start by making a whiskey sour because whiskey sour is a perfect drink for this egg white experiment. Um, and we're gonna make them all, all the exact same uh, to the degree that we can, although these different ingredients have different requirements. Um, and we're gonna basically compare them against an egg based one. And all of these are going to be made with early times whiskey because early times is actually pretty good whiskey. Uh, and I have a whole lot of it left over from when I did that Back to the Future episode because I couldn't buy any less than these huge gigantic plastic jugs. So this is the whiskey for the whiskey sour experiments. There's no reason to use anything else in this. So back in the day, when I was a kid growing up, if you asked uh, your dad or your grandmom, how do you make a whiskey sour? They would tell you, uh, they got the little packets behind the, 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 at the counter at the liquor store. You get that bartender's stuff. And so these are strictly for whiskey sours, which is why they're not really a great egg white replacement for anything other than egg white uh, whiskey sour. So, but I mean, I felt like it, for me, it's like so ubiquitous that I felt like I kind of had to use it. And it does, it's supposed to achieve that frothy texture. This is, I think, a pretty new product. It's called the original frothy, all-purpose, creamy head for cocktails. This is um, Bob's Red Mill gluten-free vegan egg replacer. This is a product I think it's been around for quite a while. This is um, Fee Brothers Fee Foam. This and this are basically going to be the same product. And then this is the, the master of them, from what I'm told. Everybody says that the best one is um, what they call aquafaba, which is the water that your beans are in. Most people like the garbanzo bean aquafaba. I mean, although technically if you had a can of black beans, that's got aquafaba in it. If you make your beans from dry, you've got aquafaba there too. Uh, but what you should not have is this, which has salt added. You gotta look for, this is made with sea salt. This says no salt. You go with the no salt one. You don't wanna add salt to a whiskey sour. I brought that so you could see the difference. The can is green at Trader Joe's. So Trader Joe's, when did I get? Wait a second, what? This is weird. This is Wegmans and this is Trader Joe's. And I'm 100% certain I bought both of these at Whole Foods. Okay, and we'll do the number one. Number one, whiskey sour. The trick is gonna be not drinking it because I, I really like a whiskey sour. I normally do not measure my egg whites. An egg white is an egg white. That's how big an egg white is. But all these other things get measured. And so to make this as scientific as possible, I'm gonna separate my egg into this instead of as I normally would right into the shaker so that we can then do a measure. And the, the rule of thumb is you want one ounce of egg white. I'm gonna pour an ounce of egg white into my shaker. Look at that, it's almost an entire ounce. One ounce of simple. One ounce of lemon juice. Two 
two ounces of cheap whiskey. Not that there's anything wrong with cheap whiskey. It's a good whiskey for cheap whiskey. I'm telling you, this early times, not, not bad. It's got a lot of peanut notes and I like that in the whiskey. We should dry shake this. And why do you need to dry shake it? Because you want those proteins, they need to unfold, but kind of like continue to hold on to each other as I understand it. As you start to add other liquids, waters, coldness to it, it just makes it like it dilutes the whole thing and they want to fall apart. So dry shaking it helps that process. A little ice in there. And this is a place, case where having some big heavy ice will really pay off. So that's why we do one big, one small. And strain away. This has been sitting here for a second or two and there's a nice cascade of color working through it. And it's that basically what that is, is that's the, the proteins working their way up after being kind of suspended throughout the drink from shaking up to the top to build a frothy head. And at current, we have about a half an inch of frothy head or maybe a quarter, a quarter of an inch of froth head. Boy, is that peanutty. <laughs> I have some peanutty bourbon. I love that. Okay, I don't know about you, but with all this UFO stuff going on lately, I'm extremely concerned with getting myself in order as a specimen of the human species. Like if I'm gonna be abducted and put into a person zoo on beta reticuli or something, I wanna give the beta reticulants what they bargain for. And frankly, there are some gaps in my diet that you could probably drive a silent black 18-wheeler loaded down with saucer crash site debris. And that's why I fill those gaps with a multivitamin from Ritual who happened to be a sponsor of this episode, so thank you, Ritual. Sure, there's a lot of multivitamins out there, but I went with Ritual because these little capsules have no fillers or colorants or any kind of weird stuff. It's just the bits and pieces it needs to do the job and nothing extra. Because when I'm getting scanned by that beta reticulin pulsating life form analyzer, I don't want them finding anything that shouldn't be there, okay? So the packaging is all made from 100% recycled materials. They are vegan and they use algal oil instead of fish oil. Uh, and you know, that all matters to me at least. And also possibly the beta reticulins because what do you think they're gonna think of us if we can't even take care of our own planet? You know, I take essential for men every day. It's got 10 quality nutrients in it, A, D, omega-3, zinc, all that good stuff that's not so easy to find in a typical earth human diet. But Ritual also makes vitamins formulated for women and people over 50, prenatal, postnatal, teens, which, Sounds like they got everybody covered, huh? It's only a dollar a day to get these things delivered straight to your door, which saves you from running out to the store and thus avoiding another prime alien abduction opportunity. And right now, Ritual is offering 10% off your first three months by using the link in the pinned comment below and the code you see right here at checkout. Okay, you guys, you head back to your regularly scheduled HD programming. I'm gonna be uh, watching the skies because I, I want to believe. I want to believe! So there is our first, our standard whiskey sour. It is, um, Texturally delicious. It is a little bit sweet, but not too sweet, honestly. It is tart. Easy, easy, easy to drink. Dangerous to drink because I want to finish that now, but I need it for science to stick around. So we can't do that for science. Science. Next thing to do, let's see. What are we going to go first here? Let's go, well, let's go with grandma's answer, bartender brand. Let's see, it's a little box here. Hey, if you're not 100% satisfied with this product, return the carton unused and unused envelopes with your name and address and we'll promptly dispatch an assassin to kill you. Oh my God, that's weird. No, properly uh, refund the purchase price and postage. It, I'm opening it the right way. It says right there, lift open this flap. So I'm already dissatisfied with the packaging. Instant whiskey sour mix. Yeah, mix it in a shaker. Put a jigger, an ounce and a half of whiskey and a jigger of cold water in a shaker. Pour in the contents of an envelope of bartender's instant whiskey sour mix, add ice and shake to chill and strain. Huh. So we'll add this powdery, mm. oh my God. Oh, dude, that's, what? Is my old factory all fucked up? Like, ah, I did a lot of road trips up to the Maritimes in Canada because my family are from New Brunswick and there's a couple of pulp mills you drive by on the way. It smells like a pulp mill or if you prefer, oh my God, yes. To be a little less tactful, a cabbage fart. Ingredients, by the way, sugar, citric acid, natural lemon flavor, sodium citrate, uh, dried egg whites, tricalum phosphate, and BHA, which prolongs, comma, freshness. Why would you put a comma there? That, what does that mean? Those are two different statements then. It prolongs and also freshness. Now, one thing, we're gonna get a completely different volume here because we didn't add Simple syrup to this, as per the instructions. It's kind of coming in in a powdered form. It does have a foam to it. Yeah, I mean, it looks looks a lot like the other one did, honestly. 
does not have a great smell. Okay, this is better. This is so much better. This is too citrus. This is too acidic. It does have a kind of a wet dog smell to it, uh, which you hear about with um, pasteurized eggs. It kind of smells like um, when your dishwasher gets dirty. Fee fi fo foam. Fee foam is used to shake cocktails to provide an attractive froth head without the need for an egg white. Add two or three dashes of fee foam to your cocktail before shaking. All right, that seems very minimal, but we'll give it a shot. Fee fi fo foam. Well, from the egg white, we had a solid centimeter, quarter inch on our right off the top. This has about an eighth, about half as much. So right away, by the instructions, it's less good. That was three dashes, maybe four even. Do you want to use more than that to really get to an egg white? Maybe. Let's see how it tastes. I would say that they're about the same. I mean, it's tough to detect a real strong difference. The egg white's a bit more textural, silky mouthfeel. Maybe this should have two or three more dashes in there and the instructions are kind of wrong because like I said, right away, we're getting more foam from the egg white, which means maybe the two or three dashes equals half an ounce of egg white. You need six. If you were really looking for a vegan egg white alternative that was shelf stable and sat in a bottle and you didn't need to like waste cans and stuff like that. And, and you can do a few of that, you know, even doing six dashes of drink, you're gonna, that's gonna last a while. That's not the worst. Let's do the frothy. This stuff says it's basically exactly the same as this. Well, this is possibly even more disappointing than the Fee Brothers. Let's give it a taste. Tastes pretty good though. Doesn't have the same mouth feel. The thing about this is that that egg white foam kind of feels like it's purely visual. It does not have the same textural thickness, mouth feel, Tough to put into words. It doesn't give that drink that same silky texture. It just doesn't. It feels thin, very thin by comparison. So that is a superficial foam, but it's not bad. It does taste good, but I don't really care about the visual component of the egg white foam. I, do, I mean, I guess I like it. it. Tells me care was taken here, but that's not what that says. And without the textural component, is there a reason for it? I think that there's not. Um, counterpoint, if I didn't make it and I didn't know that to be looking for a difference, would I detect it? I don't know. But yeah, on the whole, I, I think you're kind of not really much point in that. So this is Bob's Red Mill Egg Replacer. Now this one is a real departure. Ingredients, potato starch, tapioca flour, baking soda, and psyllium husk, P-S-Y-L-L-I-U-M husk. For one egg white, combine a teaspoon and a half of the replacer. Okay, a teaspoon and a half, no smell, I thought I smelled something, of the egg white replacer. So two tablespoons of water. And they say that that is one egg white. This is terrible. I mean, I'm just, I'm serious. There's no froth here at all, really. Eh, nothing. I just, uh, terrible. It totally neutralized the acid. No, that's actually just truly terrible. That is truly scrumptious, but it does taste like tapioca. Okay, moving along. So this is the one that they say is gonna beat them all. So this is gonna be Aquafaba. We have some Wegmans brand, no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives, garbanzo beans. Generally, from my research, you do this at a rate of an ounce. So we want, oh God, we want one ounce of this Aquafaba juice. It has the color of an egg white. Doesn't it smell like an egg white though? Unflattering, but it smells a little bit like a can of dog food. Whoa, ton of froth. I mean, that is crazy. Look at the volume of inc the increase in volume we got. It's filling the glass. That's a lot of frothing. I mean, that's nuts. I don't really know how much of that is foam on top. I mean, an inch, <laughs> you know? That's out of control. I wasn't expecting that at all. It's quickly cascading. Currently, there's a very clear quarter inch separation on top. Well, let's see how it is for taste. Yeah, no. Oh my God. It tastes like a can of garbanzo beans. <sighs> like, a, oh yeah, no. It's, you know, honestly, for a vegan, this might be a real treat because it's a little bit like a hot dog cocktail. It tastes a little hot doggy. 
Is this no salt? No, 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 no. This has to be salty. We got to go look. Maybe there's another can that doesn't have... This has salt. We got to go find a no salt can. We're going to hit pause for one second here. I think there's another can up there. A few moments later. So it turns out that the reason that this is from the wrong store is because it's not the garbanzo beans I bought for this episode. What I bought is these, which say very specifically, no salt added. So that's what we're going to use. So let's try this one more time uh, with the no salt added. Because like, honestly, that really should have been good. That should have been the ringer. Um, everybody tells me that the aquafaba is like really good. Maybe even better than egg whites. I don't know if I buy that. Especially with the aquafaba, if I'm not mistaken, what's going on here is beans are full of protein. And when you cook them, the proteins wash out and that's what's left in the water. And you are basically making a kind of a, a very good artificial egg white. So this should behave exactly like an egg white in a cocktail. So dry shaking will be of importance. Let's pour this sucker. Whoa, look at the volume of that foam. Let's give it a taste. Let's see how it is. Does it taste like a hot dog? Does it taste like hot dog water? No. This is a pretty darn good whiskey sour. Has the texture and mouthfeel of whiskey sour. Has a huge, thick, foamy head. Maybe, sometimes, sometimes, maybe, I can find a tiny amount of can taste. But on the whole, it's a darn good whiskey sour. And I'll bet if we were to dress it with some bitters, which I'm just dashing on hop, ugly instead of artfully. Whew, what a lovely nose that gives it. Yeah, you can't taste that can. Whatever tiny amount of can taste was there, gone. Damn, that's good. This is excellent. This actually works really, 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 really good. I have to say, if you are looking for an egg white replacer, aquafaba is impossible to beat at this point. The only downside is what do you do with the beans? You gotta make a lot of hummus because that is clear winner. I mean, that kicks everybody else's ass except for the actual egg white. Look at that, you can see the comparison. The aquafaba is a clear winner here, right next to the real egg white. That is the winner. Guys, this is HTD, the show where I sometimes make cocktails and talk about how to make them, drink them. And I've shot two of these back to back, which I don't often do anymore. So you're seeing a particularly lubricated and loose version of Greg. Um, and very few people watch this part of the episode, but if you are still watching this part of the episode because you love me so, I love you too. And I want you to know, thank you. In this episode, you notice I only used uh, one cheap bottle of whiskey. Is this on Curiata? I don't know. But if you like whiskey and you want to buy other whiskeys or use the things I use on the show typically, you should go to drink.curiata.com or use the link in the pinned comment below because they have great whiskeys and they deliver to 28 states currently. And that represents something like 70 or 80% of the U.S. population. Obviously, 30 or 40% of you are not. Sorry, we're working on that. It's complicated. These are some other episodes that might be of your interest. And I'm imploring you to watch them. I'm imploring you to continue to watch the show. All oh, one of these four episodes might be perfect for you. And also check out my social media. Look at it. I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. I have a Twitch. I have a Patreon. If you want to see the parts of this episode where I was too inebriated to include, you can find it on my Patreon. And if you want to see some of these other episodes of How to Drink, here they are. Look at them. You should watch them. How to Drink is thirsty for your eyes. 